Next up on the I'm doing these chronologically. You might know something right. about this. There's a guy named Buff Bagwell, Shane. Mm -hmm. And I the people that I've talked to said that this had bigger ramifications on the locker room than most people realize. They say that it maybe bridged a gap between WCW and WWF guys. And this comes straight from wrestlers that were in the locker room at the time. Apparently, this endeared you to some of the WWF guys and endeared some of the other WCW guys to some of the WWF guys. Tell me what happened. Why are you freezing water bottles, Shane? Well, you got two versions of that story. You got Buff's version, who nobody will back up. And then yeah. you got mine, which will be backed up by 20 other people that were there and saw it happen. I can confirm that. Yes, um, that, that is pretty much what happened. I've made, I've made, you know, we've kind of made peace since then. And I still, he'll still go out and tell his weird version of it. But I, I think that's kind of one of those things where he's told it to himself so much. He believes it. Like he really don't think he's lying. He just believes that's what happened. But mm -hmm. Uh, why ha what had happened was that um, we were at the Tracks Training Center, WWE, and they brought the WCW guys up to get used to the ring. But the ring's bigger. They used real ropes as opposed to cable. And so we just, you know, come up and uh, for about a week and we're all going to get adjusted to it. So all of their training, you know, stuff like that. And uh, this particular day, I'd actually hurt my shoulder working out with Mike Awesome. Just going over some spots with Mike Awesome. And um, and so we had this break, and I was sitting in the ring with on my ass with my back to the ropes, not in a corner, but kind of in the middle of the ropes, you know, with my back to the corner. And everybody's just sitting there jibber jabbering, and I had not frozen at all, because who, what the fuck do you just magically find a frozen water bottle? But there was these little ten ounce bottles of water that were in a refrigerator in a little snack room. And so I went and got it. It was the coldest thing I could find. Again, just a water bottle, not this frozen shit, which everybody says, which I guess you walk around with frozen water bottles. Who the fuck knows? So anyway, I'm sitting down. And I'm just kind of like having it on my shoulder because I'm I got this concern that this little shoulder injury is going to be a problem. And it did present a problem for a while. But like I said, I, I'm concerned. You know, I hadn't even made WWE TV yet, WWF at the time. And so anyway, as it happens with the boys, everybody starts talking shit about everybody. Now, I ain't saying nothing. I'm just sitting there, and for whatever reason, Buff decides that I'm the one to talk shit to. Now, anybody that knows me knows I got the gift of gab. And I can talk shit like nobody's business. And so he was just trying to, you know, insult me, but I was firing back, and I was just winning hands down. And he was getting embarrassed. And finally, you know, he just got upset and came, and he's standing on the floor behind me. Yeah. You know, he's kind of off to the side. And so he came and smacked me like from behind in the ear. Now, his version of events was that he somehow smacked me right in the face, which would have been impossible. He was on the floor, came and hit me from behind in the ear. And I just kind of looked at him and I chunked that bottle at him, a little plastic bottle, just kind of to, uh, to distract him. And then yeah. I was coming out and we we're going to line him up because I'm just, you know, I've, never, I've always said when it comes to being bullied, like, I would fight back. Like, I might not win. I don't give a shit if I take an L. But if you fuck with me, I'm going to fight back. That's just how it's going to happen, especially if you lay hands on me. And, two, I was young at the time. I'm old man now. Old man shame. I was like, just fuck it. Now, if you hit me, I'll probably try to fight you back. But uh, So, anyway, I jump out, and you could just see. I mean, he's doing the whole Ric Flair thing, like, no, 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 that bullshit, and kind of skippering backwards. And... <clears throat> you know, before we really get into the meat of anything else, you know, you can see blood, you know, shooting out of his damn head. Did did that surprise so you? That, 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 that busted it open. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I say, I, I mean, no matter what I had in my hand, I would have threw it at him just to get out and get on even ground with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. And I know people would ask me before, like, why would you throw something? Listen, when I when we're fighting, ain't no damn rule book. Much less yeah. if you outweigh me by fifty fucking pounds, you know I'm hurt, and you're going to hit me from behind. And then, bitch, because I threw something, man, fuck you. Do you think that, like, did the That's cat catch him? Did what part of it caught him, or did you even pay attention? Don't care. <laughs> Slip on a but I know that, for all you care, right? But I know everybody swore to secrecy because with the WCW guys, we knew this was going to make us look bad. Now, I immediately, I'm one of those people too that I get in a fight immediately. I regret it. You mm -hmm. know, I think that if you're a mature person, you know, you immediately regret that shit. 
Like, even if it's warranted at times, you just kind of hate that the whole situation happened. And so immediately I was talking to him about things and like, man, you know, fuck, I hate this, that sort of shit happened, but I was still kind of hot. And they took his ass to the hospital. And um, uh, they took me to lunch and paid for it. Make of that what you will. And, Ooh. Uh, but the boys swore to secrecy, and I can't say who they was. It wasn't WWE, it was just the boys. And um, and so anyway, the WCW guys, we knew that this was going to make us look bad. We ain't even made it to TV yet. Now we're fighting them up amongst ourselves. So we were kind of worried about the perception. So we all swore to secrecy, and that never works because the boys always talk. They always talk. But this was the one time that it worked until I get a talking from Johnny Ace. So I'm at a house show like the next week. You know, I, I was still booked on everything, so nothing really happened to me. And I'm over there just kind of warming up, you know, shadow boxing or whatever. And Johnny Ace just comes and stands right beside me. He's like right here looking in the same direction I am. And then he goes, so, Sugar Shane. And he turns right to me like this close. What happened to Bagwell? And I'm like, <laughs> and so I know he knows. You know? I was like, man, fuck that shit, you know. Kind of, kind of told him what happened. Apparently, his his mom had called the office and uh, Ooh. and ratted the whole situation out. And um, oh no, you're cooked. You're cooked from that point. Well, I knew the way Johnny asked me that he knew, and I wasn't going to lie about it, you know. And I, I just well, I mean, told him I mean, exactly why. Bagwell's cooked. It, that has to look bad from a locker room standpoint. If your mom's calling, um, so <laughs> but that was kind of the same. She was like his slash agent or some shit. I don't know what was going yeah. on with that. But um, anyway, so. I know I get the TV and uh, uh, somehow Sugar Shane's bags have been moved from the WCW side to the WWF side. And so I was like, yes! Because <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of segregated at the time, man. It was WCW on one side, WWF on you the other. You broke barriers, Shane. Broke barriers, man. And, uh, you know, there was, uh, he was just very disliked and, you know, his own worst enemy. Um, I know down in Atlanta, I had to have the meeting with Jr. and Jr. asked me what happened, and I told him, and 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 just shooting straight with him, and I told him, you know, I said I want to be here. There's nothing more I want in this world than to wrestle for this company, you know. And I said, but I will never let nobody hit me. Like that shit just not going to happen. And Jr. was cool with that, and I, I'm pretty sure Jr. would verify that. And uh, and that was kind of it. And I think Bagwell got fired uh, that day. It was that was like a week or something later. Uh, he either got fired that day or the next week. And well, it, I, mean, I mean, it sucks, man, because he was tailor-made for WWF. Like, he had to look, you know, he could talk, he had charisma. Uh, so he could have done really well for himself there, but, you know, just being a dick that being endeared a you to the front wrong of, person. Do you think huh? that endeared you to the front office? Because JR and I would imagine Johnny Ace and Vince are kind of old school guys, and they they probably expect that out of their bigger guys. I mean, it seemed like they were taking a gamble. I mean, they were going with smaller guys like you, wrestling the bigger guys and do you think that maybe helped you out a little bit in their eyes saying he's not afraid to, to go at it with the bigger guy yeah i mean it, it probably did you know that old school mentality exists but it, it's also just about being a man and a human being you know um like i said uh I, i've kind of always been like that i was a small kid but when the bullies would come at me i would come back and you know uh, and eventually they just leave you to fuck alone not everybody can take up for themselves you know i understand that but you know, I, I didn't come from the don't be a bully program. I came from the don't be a bitch program. And if you hit me, I'm going to fucking punch you in your mouth. And then we'll see what happens. And like I said, I don't want to sound tough. Like I can't take an L because I have. But you're going to have to earn it. And I'm not going to give it to you for free. And so it was what it was. But, you know, I think the boys end up, you know, they laugh about that shit. I don't think that uh, it helped me get a push or anything like that. But, you know, I mean, it let guys know, like, hey, you know, <laughs> you might not want to fuck with that one. <laughs> <laughs> 